Almost everyone has a computer, and my goal is to have that Notion app on every computer. And so there's so many niche communities that we've partnered with, and I've met so many amazing influencers that I probably never would have found. So if I had to sum up our creator community in one sentence and try and capture it all, which it would be very hard, but I would say it spans across productivity to students, to entrepreneurs, to business professionals, to the TikTok aesthetic people who've dubbed themselves as the TikTok girlies, to Dungeon and Dragon <laughs> users, to chess players, to documentary producers. Really, the list goes on and on. I've worked with so many different creators. And so I actually don't try to limit myself because I've constantly been surprised by the results where I'm like, I would have probably guessed, you know, this would do okay, but then I'm blown away once the results actually start coming in of like a very niche creator because they have their communities. They know what appeals to their audience better than I do at the end of the day. So I've been surprised a lot and it's been a lot of fun. Explore the minds and marketing strategies behind today's winning brands and businesses. Tap into the power of the creator economy with Earned by Creator IQ. Here's Connor Begley. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Earn. Today, I've got Lexi Barnhorn on the show today. Welcome to the show today, Lexi. Hi, happy to be here. How would you describe Notion for those that don't know what you guys are? Yes. Yeah, so Notion is a connected workspace. So it's where you can create docs, wikis, manage tasks, and organize your life's work all in one place. A lot of people actually refer to it as their second brain. Why did you join Notion when you could have kept killing it at Curology? I think... What really appealed to me about Notion is it's a product that I've been using for years prior to them ever reaching out to me for a job. And I had used it back in 2018 as like a personal user. And then I actually brought it to Curology and we had an enterprise account. So I was essentially like a champion of the product within the business use case. And it would have been very easy for me to stay at a beauty company or go to another beauty company and go to another D2C company. But my team was very much at the point where like the engine was running and they were very self sufficient. And I needed to challenge myself because I was getting very comfortable. And so with Notion, the opportunity kind of fell on my lap. And I was like, okay, this would be completely different. I'm definitely gonna have to learn a lot. I never thought I would be working on things like AI, for example, but I've had to learn a lot. And I wanted to challenge myself, especially considering I'm still very early in my career. So I wanted to be more well-rounded with just my influencer marketing experience. And so making the jump to Notion, I was able to also expand into a global role because Notion is a global company. At Curology, I was always very limited to US only and also like a very niche type of influencer where anyone has a computer so anyone can have Notion on their desktop. So it was just very different and it was exciting to me. And another piece that really appealed to me is... When I started at Curology, the company was only 50 people and no one had ever heard of the brand really. And so I missed those early stages. And while I was at Curology, you know, I was a part of a huge growth stage. And so I missed those great wins in the early days and like being a part of that insane growth. And so when I was interviewing at Notion, it was 180 employees. So definitely smaller because I think at the time Curology was in the 600s. And so I was excited to go back to a small company and just get scrappy again. And I'm a builder at the end of the day. So I wanted to build again, which is what led me to switch over to tech. Yeah. So Notion's tripled headcount since that time, roughly, right? Five, 600 employees. What do you think of the challenges of a growing organization like that? Where do you think people go wrong? What's been interesting about Notion is even though we have scaled very quickly, I've been so impressed by how we bring people on and like how we think about scaling. It never feels like crazy, like, oh, there's another onboarding class of 20 people starting this week. Like it never feels like that because we're still very intentional with our hiring. For the longest time, and it was a part of my interview as well, our CEO was still interviewing every candidate. And so he was on my interview, and I remember being so scared. I'd never been interviewed by a CEO of a company, especially one that I admired so much. But it really is because he is so passionate about the product, and he really wants to make sure others who are joining are really passionate about their craft so that we can really build something exceptional. So our growth has never felt very huge. I like still have a lot of friends that were there when I first started and people have just trickled in over time where it never feels too 
fast and it never feels like we're bringing on too many people. Like everyone's job serves a purpose and we're all working towards the same goal. So it's been crazy because I like look at our headcount and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I joined. And I think I was like the 200th employee and we're like pushing 600 at this point. And it's only been two years but it still feels very slow. And our growth has been very intentional as well. We're always thinking about how we can build a great product versus always just trying to ship anything and everything, which I really appreciate. Yeah, which is not a given, right? Like I know Airtable was just in the news for, you know, they hired a ton of people, but like never really got retention right, never really got product market fit right. And so they're dramatically downsizing in terms of headcount. So it's really cool to see. And I can say we are also a Notion customer. So we use Notion as well. We actually just got rid of a couple of tools to centralize on Notion. So we love to fan. hear it. Yeah, what's, <laughs> what's wild is, so I thought I knew how to use Notion because I was the Notion champion at Curology. But then when I joined Notion and they have like how Notion uses Notion training when you join, I was like, blown away. I was like, I don't even know why I was using any other <laughs> tools. I'm like, I could have just been doing it all in Notion this entire time. And so I am all for centralizing it because I mean, as you can imagine at Notion, we only use Notion. So my day is constantly in Notion. And especially when it's a product you love, it's fun. Like I love organizing my proposals and making them aesthetic. And so it's a lot of fun when you can just do all of your work in a product you really do actually enjoy using. Totally. So let's talk about the creators at Notion. So I can imagine there's a lot of organization junkies. And again, I think that going back to this, you guys are not the typical model for where influencers or creators have historically been focused on, right? So how do you think about the creator program? Who are the creators for Notion? And you guys have templates and all this stuff. How do you think about that? What drives success for you guys in this space? Definitely at Curology, it was always very clear who our target was. But at Notion, there are just so many niche communities on the internet. And there are really a lot of people that use Notion. Like when I started at Curology, no one had ever heard about Curology. So a lot of my day was trying to convince people to use the product and to learn more about it where now I reach out to different influencers. They're already using it. They've already heard of it. They're already down to work with us. So it's a lot easier. I do have that advantage, thankfully, because we have such an amazing product. So our creator program, it really spans across every social media platform. So something I hadn't done previously was now I'm partnering with LinkedIn influencers to promote our B2B and our AI product. And I will say, I think LinkedIn's a very underutilized platform. I've had a lot of fun working with these creators and literally the views these posts get, because I think I saw a stat the other day. It was like, I don't know how many people are on LinkedIn. I think it was like 70 million and only 3 million of those people are actually utilizing the platform and posting. So there's a lot of ability for your post to get such insane reach. So that's been really fun. I don't think LinkedIn influencers would have worked for Curology, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I honestly, so two things, right? One, I think they can. So Corey Marchisoto, who's the CMO at Elf, she's pretty aggressive on LinkedIn. She's like, those are people, those are real people. And often, and I think this is true for Notion as well, you have to think about who signs up for LinkedIn. It's yep. somebody that's typically very invested in their career. They're probably a higher income earner or they're a buyer or like if you're in the beauty industry, it could be somebody that's like the head of purchasing at whatever, right? Yep. So the people yep. that you're reaching are more than likely more impactful on a per yeah. person basis as well, right? And so I actually think consumer brands can be successful there. It's a different thing. It's more like industry marketing than yep. it is like consumer marketing, but it's also a little bit of consumer too. So yeah. I love that. I love LinkedIn too. I, yeah. I publish a lot of shit. I'm into it. Well, I think it adds just like a lot of credibility to your brand. I see a lot of beauty brands. Like I'm always seeing Super Goop. I'm always seeing like Rare Beauty, like their different execs posting their events. And I think by seeing that on LinkedIn and seeing what the brands are doing behind the scenes, it really does add a credibility. And I remember I did post a little bit on LinkedIn when I was at Curology, but it was more so about like our professional things like events and things we had launched and new influencers we were partnering with. But that all just leads to top of mind. So I think really, yeah, like you said, any brand could potentially be successful on LinkedIn. So yeah, that's been one big takeaway is LinkedIn influencers are the way. I'm a huge fan of the platform, but we really are on like every social media platform. So YouTube, TikTok, newsletters, I've done Twitter partnerships. So we're on every social media platform we can be on. And a lot of it is asking the creators what they're active on and where they think, you know, a notion push could be successful. So I rely a lot on them. And it also, the program spans across every niche. So we do have the productivity niche, which is a little bit of our bread and butter. And those videos do really well. But when I think about it, almost everyone has a computer. 
And my goal is to have that Notion app on every computer. And so there's so many niche communities that we've partnered with. And I've met so many amazing influencers that I probably never would have found. So if I had to sum up our creator community in one sentence and try and capture it all, which it would be very hard, but I would say it spans across productivity to students, to entrepreneurs, to business professionals, to the TikTok aesthetic people who've dubbed themselves as the TikTok girlies, to Dungeon and Dragon <laughs> users, to chess players, to documentary producers. Really, the list goes on and on. I've worked with so many different creators. And so I actually don't try to limit myself because I've constantly been surprised by the results where I'm like, I would have probably guessed, you know, this would do okay, but then I'm blown away once the results actually start coming in of like a very niche creator because they have their communities. They know what appeals to their audience better than I do at the end of the day. So I've been surprised a lot. and It's been a lot of fun. The Dungeons and Dragons one is funny because it's like, that's not my world, but like those worlds are super complex. And I think there's a lot to keep track of. They can run over multiple years and often spreadsheets just aren't enough, right? You need a yeah. lot more than that. So Their Notion setup, I was blown away. I was learning from them, which I constantly am because I'm just like, wait, how did you do that? Can you show me that? Where I'm the one supposed to be demoing them, right? And so it's yeah. really fun because I'm always learning new things about the products through our creators. Yeah. And again, I just love that that's a real program for you guys. Like there's not a lot of software companies that think about it that way. That's really cool. Let's take a step back to Curology for a second. So just looking at your background there, you know, you're promoted, I think four or five times in four years, the company grew a lot, et cetera, for other people. So a lot of the people that are going to be listening to this are going to be earlier in their careers. So, you know, people that are just getting started or coming out of school for those people that look at the last call it six, seven years that you've had this trajectory, what would be the advice you'd give them? Why do you think you've done so well? Yeah. I mean, it's wild looking back on it. Yeah. I was looking at my LinkedIn the other day. I hadn't looked at it in a while and I was like, oh, wow, it really is like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but I didn't feel like that in the moment. And I really think a lot of it nails down to it was like the right time, right moment, right company, willingness to work some long nights at the office and get scrappy. You know, I took a risk when I joined Curology. The company was not as well known as it was now. Like I joined back in 2017. My parents had never heard of it. They were like, what? is this company? Why can't you just go work at like a P&G like everyone else? They didn't have 401k at the time. And I remember my parents were really upset about that. I really believed in the company. Like I remember I found the listing on AngelList and our CEO was a dermatologist and he worked in middle of nowhere, Arizona. And he saw the like tax it had on people to have to go to the dermatologist, pay all the bills where he was like, I could look at someone's skin and know in five seconds the exact ingredients that they needed. So he's like, it should be easier than this. And that was something that I really resonated with because I had grown up and had acne my entire life. I'd seen the financial burden it could be at times to my parents. And so it was a product that I wanted to be a part of. And I just really connected with it from like that first job posting. And I remember I had no experience, but I wrote like the longest heartfelt note on my application through AngelList and ended up getting the job, but it didn't feel like a job. So I took a risk joining. There were only 20 people in San Francisco when I joined. The rest was like fulfillment and dermatologists. So my biggest piece of advice for anyone that's just graduating that wants to advance quickly in their career is to join a startup. It will be a risk, but you never know like what can come from it. And especially if you're passionate about the product, like you're willing to work the long nights and make this product extremely successful. And so I watched influencers even go from not feeling their most confident self to me cold outreaching to them being like, hey, try this product. It's worked really well for me. I think it could work well for you. I saw your video on X, Y, and Z. And then them texting me six months later and being like, I've never been more confident. Like I finally have clear skin. Like I've never thought I would be able to say that. And so that to me was really emotional where I wanted to work hard because I loved that feeling and I really connected with the product. I connected with our users. So it didn't feel like work. I was so passionate about the product where like I was willing to do all of these extra things, which I think then led to my advancement in my career. That was like my favorite time in the world. Like I met the best people. I made the best of friends. And so it never felt like work. And I never was thinking about, you know, a crazy exit like everyone else in tech. I was just really enjoying what I was doing and the people yeah. I was helping. And so it all fell into place place from that. I mean, that hits on, I think, a lot of what I've observed as well, which is when you're thinking about joining a company, if the company's 
growing at 50% a year, then roughly there'll be 50% new jobs a year, which means there'll be roughly 50% more promotions a year, right? And so when you have a fast growing company, particularly a startup, the opportunity to get upwardly mobile and move up the chain is much easier to do than a company that's growing slower. Now, obviously there's the risk, right? Which is like these things can blow up, whether it's Airtable or whatever, they're not guaranteed success. And so I think to your point, expecting them to be a big financial outcome is not something I would say, but from like a career development perspective, like it's great if that happens, it happened for our team and us when we sold, but like It's just definitely not always the case. And then I think the second thing you mentioned that I think is really critical is you actually like really dug the product. You're really into it. I think that's important going into something like this because then you're more excited to work about it. You're more excited to learn about it. You want to become an expert in it. And it's clear with Notion that you're doing that as well. You checked those same two boxes, loved the product and the company was growing really quickly with a lot of opportunity. So dig that. Yeah. And one thing I'll say about like the equity piece is I didn't even know what the equity I was getting when I joined Curology even meant. Like I was like, okay, this 12 strike price, like I have no clue what any of this means. And I'm kind of glad for that experience because it really made me value the cold, hard cash where I think, (laughs) I think in tech, you know, a lot of people can get caught up. They can get caught up in like this promise and like you have to look at it as bonus. I don't look at it as a guarantee. Notion is private right now. And I do believe in the company and I'm very confident something will happen one day, but it's a bonus and you shouldn't just get caught up on that because it can make you go crazy and it can make you get really upset. And so I got that advice from someone in my career where they were like, your equity, it's all monopoly money at the end of the day, but it could be life changing, but you can't look at it that way and you can't get caught up in that. And if that's all you're focusing on when you're like at a company, you probably should rethink why you're at that company. Yeah. When I was at Curology, I didn't remember that I had the stock because I was so caught up in the product where that could yeah. have just been me being naive, you know, but it is really, it's bonus money is what I look at it as. Yeah, you don't want to rely on it. Also, shout out to AngelList. We did a lot of hiring off AngelList at the beginning. It's a great uh, Yeah, way what to find happened? Companies. What happened to AngelList? <laughs> I haven't heard about them. And it was like, I applied for all of my internships, like all of my jobs back in the day on AngelList. And I really did love that platform, but it's like gone away, which I'm super sad about. I think it's still going. I mean, they've got, I just checked out, you got like 500 employees. I think they're cruising. I don't know. I'm not in startup yeah. land anymore, right? That's like, true. We're just beyond that from a size perspective. Yep. So let's talk about TikTok. We've played around with TikTok a little bit, turning the podcast into some episodes. I think there's a way to be really good at it. You know, I was observing what you guys were doing and was really impressed with it, both in terms of the reach that you're getting, but generally just the style and the approach that you're taking. I think it's very like customer first, very culture first. And you've been very involved in that, right? Obviously, you're on the creator side, but at least I see you show up in the videos. So talk to me a little bit about how would you define your team's approach to TikTok and what's working there? I'm a big fan of TikTok. Like I really am. It's one of my favorite platforms. I'm on it probably way too much, which helps with our strategy in a way. But I think a lot of our approach is we really don't think too hard about like a set in stone strategy. And I feel like that's where a lot of brands can get it wrong. I know like as a social team, a lot of times they have like their posts planned out like months in advance, like the content calendar's done, which works for platforms like Instagram, platforms like Twitter. But TikTok moves so fast and some videos you thought were going to get millions of views and break the internet end up totally flopping. You have to be okay with that. And so it really is, I look at it as a test and learn channel. It's a fun channel. You know, if we end up doing something that works well and resonates, like that's a bonus, but we don't really have a set in stone strategy. And I think when you do have a set in stone strategy, that's when you're almost setting yourself up to fail because You can't look at it too far in the future because it's changing every single day. And I also feel like it's a platform where you need to meet the viewers where they're at. You can't do anything overproduced. You can't really plan it out because those things stick out like nails on a chalkboard. I mean, I see it when I'm like scrolling in my free time. Right when I see an overproduced video, it's like, boom, done. Scroll past, scroll past. As fast as As you can. As fast as I can. (laughs) And so our approach at Notion really is to like, be a part of the conversation and filter ourselves in there where it's so seamless, where you don't even realize it's from a brand. Like it's just, we're giving you valuable information. We like to hop on trends that we find relevant to the product. I think our 
most watched TikTok was an idea that I had at my desk, showed our social media manager. We filmed it in five minutes and posted it and it has like 1.8 million views. And that's what happens. And we didn't expect it to get that many views, right? But we were just like, let's just put it up and test and see what happens. Because TikTok is one of those platforms where I think you actually can delete videos and people won't notice on like Instagram. (laughs) So we look at it as just like our fun channel, but we try and give people like valuable content. So we do work a lot with our education team to figure out different tips and tricks. We're always looking at what's happening in the conversation about Notion right now. Like what can we jump on? Right now we're doing a lot of back to school content because that's what we're seeing. Like tons of people are sharing their setups for back to school. So we're trying to filter in tips and tricks. Like we just did one the other day highlighting our web clipper, which is an amazing feature. It's a Google Chrome plugin, and you can basically clip an article, add it to a Notion database, and now we have an AI database feature where you can summarize the article. We put that like out on TikTok, and it did really well because it's giving people like valuable content. And our goal is, and I really do look at TikTok as like the next search engine. Our goal is to really target these secondary keywords. So if anyone ever searched productivity or if they search social media content tips or like any of these little keywords, we want Notion to show up. So we try and go after those like niche communities, the secondary hashtags. Like we're not trying to just go after hashtag Notion. We want to go after a hashtag productivity, hashtag organization. And we want Notion to show up. And then along with our users wanting to join the conversation, I think What's so unique about Notion is the customization aspect where one person shows their setup and someone finds it super aesthetic. So then they want to show their setup and show it off. So it really creates like a trickle down effect where people are always wanting to insert Notion and insert their own workspaces. And then thankfully, a lot of people at the company watch TikTok. And so they're on the platform in their free time, including myself. And so a lot of our best ideas were actually crowdsourced. The social media manager and I, we started a Slack channel called the Social Culture Club. And so anytime someone sees like a funny idea or like a fun TikTok, they post it in that channel. And then 30 minutes later, we will have made our own rendition about Notion on it. And like, we're always crowdsourcing ideas So it's like a test and learn. It doesn't really have a strategy. And I get asked that a lot because people are always interested because they see how well we're doing on TikTok. And I think because we're not focusing too heavily on it and because we're really just trying to give people valuable content, we've been so successful because the users are really resonating with it. And so I was just taking down a note. I was like, why do I not do that? Like, get the team involved. Yeah. I think you can even put some incentives in place. Like, I'll buy you lunch if I use your idea, right? Yeah. Like, I'm creating content. I got a bunch of ideas. But like, getting ideas from the team. And I'd actually be curious about this. But getting the team involved specifically, and even like rewarding them for that. Like, hey, I'll send you 50 bucks on DoorDash if you use your idea. I think is fascinating, right? Just set up a yeah. Slack channel and let them share there. Anytime you can gamify the experience, I feel like it's always a win because people are like wanting to get involved, especially when it's with your coworkers. There's like an increased amount of competitiveness for some reason. And so people love getting involved. And that channel has been so fun because even I'll have an idea, but I'll be like, how can we make this notion? And then everyone's chiming in. And it's like a work break for our engineers and like our designers who are like constantly just dialed in. So people really have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I love that. On the idea of TikToks, we're talking a little bit about your TikTok and what you do. How do you approach the TikTok space with creators, right? Because from what I've observed, paid content on TikTok does not generally do very well. Any kind of sponsored piece of material just generally doesn't do well, you know, unless you put ads behind it. So what's been your approach with the creators in the TikTok space? It's interesting because it's definitely changed over time. And I feel like we were pretty early to the game with Curology on TikTok. I remember we started doing partnerships when it was still Musical.ly. And I think that was helpful because there were less people on the app. But as we know, the app has just exploded over time. And it's created more influencers than brands even have the ability to work with. So our approach on the creator side at Notion We were doing a lot of partnerships on TikTok, but you can't sit there and try and measure all conversions that come through from TikTok because it's going to be near to impossible. There's no clickable links in the content. So people have to go to the bio. And I just know how I work and like how my consumer journey is. And I'm sure it's very similar to a lot of people is like, I'm not going to the bio. I'm going to go search the product. I'm going to go search it after I get done with my little TikTok sprint here. And so... You can't look at TikTok as like a heavily performance growth channel because it's just you're going to set yourself up for failure. It's very hard to track conversions on TikTok. 
So if you have a how'd you hear about a survey, then that's a plus. Unfortunately, we don't at Notion, but we do look at TikTok as like an awareness and education channel to its core. It's not really a conversion growth channel for us. And so from the creator side, I try and partner with people who I know are going to give valuable content. So I partner with a lot of people who know, like they know Notion better than I do. So they can do education series or they can show their setup. And we used to partner with a lot of large creators But with TikTok, it's a very interesting platform where no views are guaranteed. And like you said, the paid piece, people can spot that right away. And those paid sponsorships don't do as well as they're organic. So I do always listen to the creators. I have them give me an idea first before I send them a brief because they're going to know what's going to work, especially on TikTok for their audience, because they've done a bunch of A-B tests themselves to continue staying relevant in the crazy algorithm that is TikTok. So I always listen to the creators. But recently, I switched to a totally different strategy and you may have seen it on our TikTok but I am only partnering right now with UGC creators so what we've done is we've partnered with this company called Kale it's called kalecard.com yeah I'm a huge, huge fan of their product. I'm constantly screaming it from the rooftops. So what it is, is you can create challenges for anyone to apply and to make content. And I think that's the beauty of TikTok is anyone can go viral if your content is really well done. So when we have different campaigns, we will put there on the app different challenges for people to get involved. I'll go on our TikTok and I'll promote it. And then we get anyone and everyone who uses Notion getting involved, making content. Some of it goes viral. Some of it doesn't. That's totally fine because maybe they just tap their own friend community, which is always a win. And instead of paying creators up front like a flat fee for their content, Kale has some sort of formulation on the back end that pays out for like views, engagement, etc. So it also gives the people making the videos incentive because they want to make more money. So they want their video to be really well done to have a good potential on getting more views. So it's a win-win for everyone. And we find it as a huge win because we have so many people in our community that are always wanting to work with us. Unfortunately, it's just myself and one other person on my team. So we can't work with everyone. So this kind of gives anyone the opportunity to create Notion content, show off their workspace, join our challenges, and we continue staying relevant on TikTok through it. So I'm a huge fan. I'm a big fan of Kale. We've seen a lot of success through it. So that's the new strategy that we've shifted towards. Yeah, the idea of paying out based on these awareness drivers, whether it's views or engagements or whatever it is, is fascinating because it's like TikTok and for TikTok specifically, obviously you can include trackable links, et cetera. But even if you were to look at Instagram, you know, the vast majority of content on Instagram is organic and that stuff isn't going to contain a link or a discount code or whatever, but that's probably what's actually driving revenue, driving awareness, driving all these things. So logically rewarding people for that as the KPI makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. And And we have trackers. So we do a quarterly love survey to see, you know, how people heard about Notion. And although we don't have the like hard metrics in a survey for everyone signing up, we still get an indicator through that. And TikTok is always on there. It is always on there. And so we know it's doing something. And we know, especially like through our work, it's helping get other people involved in the conversation. Hashtag Notion is almost at 1 billion views. I don't know any other brand or software product that has that many views to their hashtag. And by the way, a lot of those are completely unpaid. It's just organic and people wanting to share their setups. So we know TikTok is driving a lot for the company. That's why we don't track it so heavily or tie a lot of KPIs to it because it really is just like a bonus. Like it's just this fun, exciting thing that runs on the side that we know we get a lot of reach through, but we don't tie ourselves too heavily to the metrics on that platform. But the thing is, if you could tie yourselves heavily to the metrics, maybe you triple the investment you put in there, right? Exactly. Maybe we're, we could do twice as much. That's wild. Like that's awesome. I like was blown away coming in. I was just like, what brand, let alone a software product, has almost a billion views on TikTok? I mean, when I joined, I think they were at like 500 million views on Hashtag Notion. And that's why I was like, how do you guys not have a TikTok? And they're just like, you know, we haven't like found the right approach yet. Thankfully, when I joined, I was like, first thing, we're making a Notion TikTok. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because I'm like, we need to be a part of this conversation at least. So it's been, yeah, TikTok is like my favorite platform. It's like the new SEO. So I'm always blown away by it. Yeah, that SEO, that was the other angle I was thinking about was where you're talking about we're targeting productivity, we're targeting these secondary things that people search for, right? What are productivity hacks or whatever? And if you show up there, that's awesome, right? Like, yeah. 
And clearly, I love that if you go on your LinkedIn, the about you, one of the three things listed there is TikToks on Notion. You are all in. Yep. I am always making TikToks and people are always coming up to me in the office being like, when's our next office fashion TikTok? And our New York office was so mad at me because there was one time I went and I was like, we're going to do a fashion TikTok. And then like I got caught up in something because we were doing an event and I forgot and I've never heard the end of it. So I'm going to be in New York next week and I'm like, everyone be ready. Fashion TikTok is coming in hot because I have not been able to hear the end of it for forgetting to do it that one time. So everyone at the company is really bought in too, which helps. So let's do one fun kind of end of show question. When we're talking about a billion, talking about billion dollars, we can talk about Taylor Swift, right? So I know that you're a fan. (laughs) Huge fan. And, And I want to know, as someone who's not a fan, as someone who hasn't followed the journey, which I know is pretty blasphemous around these parts, what is it about her and the way that they've done things that has led to kind of where she's at today. I mean, it's pretty wild. Talk me through that. What's from your perspective? I mean, she is the most exceptional business woman I've ever seen. I think anyone's ever seen. She is genius. And honestly, it's something I could probably analyze for hours because of everything her team does. And I was even talking to a coworker the other day about he's not a fan of Taylor Swift. And I was like, you don't understand. I was like, you need to just go to the concert. You just, if you don't even want to go to the concert, go to the AMC movie. Like I'll buy your ticket. It is something you've never seen. And he was like, you know what? The more that I think about it, if there was like one team that I could sit down with, it would be Taylor Swift's. And I'm like, yeah. honestly, that's a good way to put it. Cause that would be my first one as well. I think what's made her so successful. And this is something that I think a lot of people should have in their marketing strategies as well is she is so human first. She's just real and she's vulnerable. And the way that she songwrites and like has these emotions, her journey is basically like any emotion that you've ever felt in your life. There is a Taylor Swift song for it because she has (laughs) sat down after like every emotion she's ever had. And she has written a song that we've all resonated with. It's genius because she's able to connect with people in a way where like it's emotions first. And I even think from a brand perspective, when you can have someone be emotionally connected to your product, that is the jackpot. Like that is brand affinity, brand loyalty goals. And with Taylor Swift, she does just that, but she also does these things called Easter eggs where she's constantly leaving little secrets of like, what will my next album be? What will it be about? I'm going to like drop these Easter eggs. So my fans are always watching. They're always looking to like see what I could be up to. And so she gamifies her life in a way where like right now she's wearing a lot of black and blue, which 1989 is coming out and the color scheme for that is blue. And we already know about that, but we're all like, huh? Why is she wearing a lot of black? And then at the VMA, she was wearing a snake bracelet. And we're like, okay, done. (laughs) Reputation, Taylor's version, is the next album she's going to be releasing. And everyone's obsessed. And they're always looking. (laughs) It's just wild. And, you know, you think about it from, like, a brand product launch perspective. We would do that stuff at Curology where we would tease. And we would do all these things to get people engaged so that when you actually do the launch, everyone's like, I knew it. I was there. Like, I'm watching this. She's a genius. And once you go to a concert, you can feel the energy in the room and everyone's on the same level. There's no embarrassment. She has the U.S. economy on her back. They're literally wanting her to come back. So I think that tells us everything (laughs) we need to know about Taylor Swift and her power. So, yeah. I mean, I think her tour generated is like one point whatever billion. It's just wild. It was most ever for any tour. What I connect with there that I think is really interesting and to tie it back a little bit to this kind of social media stuff that we're talking about is like as an artist, you can now control a consistent daily narrative and connection with your audience that you can build over a decade or multiple decades in a way that you just couldn't in the past, right? You didn't have that kind of control and that kind of communication with the people that are part of your community. I really want somebody to do a real, like I want to read like a 20 page paper on the last 10 years of Taylor Swift and just like understand the nuance because I think it's fascinating personally. I mean, she's very human first. And like, I think of the early days, even like why her fan base has been so ride or die is she makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. Like in the early days, she had a Tumblr account and she would go and comment on all of her fans like Tumblr posts. And you could tell it was her just by the way she was communicating. And she would even talk about it in interviews and she would send her fans money. She would send them tickets. Like she always makes people feel special 
And because she's just so real and human first, like she just creates a connection with her fans that like no artist is able to produce. And if you think about it, it's really not that much work for her because she's just commenting on a couple social media posts, like probably taking 30 minutes out of her day to look and find the right ones. And then she's not even, you know, teasing her next album. She's just like, oh, I'm going to throw on this bracelet. And now everyone will know, you know what I mean? So it's very like real, again, like not thinking too hard about it, which is what I really love about her. Awesome. Well, Lexi, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I learned a lot today and not surprised about the success that you guys have seen or that you've seen and that Notion has has seen and excited to keep following what you do. Yeah, thank you. This has been a lot of fun. And I've loved chatting about all things influencer because it's definitely an industry that I hold near and dear to my heart. So we did it. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, Lexi. Be a friend, tell a friend and subscribe. Earned by Creator IQ. Creator IQ is your all in one solution to grow, manage, scale, and measure your influencer marketing program. Ready to unlock the power of the creator economy? Get started with a demo today at creatoriq.com. <laughs>